Good evening and thank you for the Architecture Foundation um, for inviting me here tonight. I'm here today to tell you about an idea called gender mainstreaming. Why this is relevant uh, for public space planning in particular and in London. So there I've said it, um, the word gender. <laughs> I can hear a pin drop now. Uh, so let me tell you um, and get this out of the way first. This is not necessarily about men versus women, but gender does play a um, part. So gender mainstream mainstreaming is a socially sensitive approach to planning that addresses needs in a differentiated fashion. Please note the emphasis on difference rather than the more generic terms that describe the quality of public space in New London um, plan. Safe, inclusive and accessible amongst other terms. These are very well said, but how can we measure them? And uh, how can we work with these terms in a city with such different um, neighborhoods? Um, we actually need a systematic understanding of what is the difference uh, in order to include everyone, um, especially if we want to draw up plans um, how to manage public spaces that are not publicly owned. London has a series of amazing public spaces. Um, until about one and a half years ago, London spa London's public space really was my oyster and there was nothing too remote or too difficult to get to. Then as a new mom uh, of a spirited baby and meanwhile uh, a very active toddler, I find myself increasingly contained in these types of spaces. My public sp uh, space universe um, shrunk to a series of local networks of paths, parks and playgrounds. And it's actually an amazing asset to have these at your doorsteps almost anywhere in London. Um, but once you start spending a lot more time in here, um, you also um, think, about, think about some of the limitations and opportunities that are missed. A lot of these spaces um, often don't have benches. Um, they are fenced off from the rest of the space, uh, not allowing an overlap of uses. Um, so let's say if you want to have a pic family picnic and one of your children or your child wants to go and play, one of you has to leave um, and miss on the gossip uh, with the rest of the party. And also the elements um, included are often very repetitive. So why not go to one of these more amazing public spaces? Well, of course you can, but try negotiating the tube um, in the rush hour or outside of the rush hour with a pram um, and make this work around your child's routine. Of course you will do that on the weekends, of course, of course you will do that um, on special occasions, but I'm trying to focus here on the everyday. So I find myself uh, back to my square one, one of my local playgrounds, and this is just one lens through which to look at the everyday public space. Um, now imagine the different needs of a cyclist, an elderly person, uh, a person in a wheelchair, a mom of triplets, I've got actually a friend with triplets currently, um, completely different universe for her. So I couldn't help but wonder, aside of these amazing public spaces, um, is there a way to plan better for the everyday public space, for the people who actually use it um, every day? Isn't this what the inclusivity is all about? Uh, so my maternity leave um, stroke public space research brought me to the idea um, of gender mainstreaming. This is a policy which was pioneered um, in Vienna since 1990s, and it was about identifying and obtaining systematic understanding of the different needs of citizens and taking equal account of them. So, for example, um, the Viennese officials looked at um, daily movements and the patterns of movements of um, a part-time employed person uh, as opposed to full-time employment, uh, and found vast differences. So somebody in part-time employment with caretaking responsibilities um, and homemaking responsibilities would make more frequent and shorter trips on a daily basis as opposed to somebody in full-time employment. They found that uh, women walked more and used the public transport more, uh, but also a myriad of other uses um, and needs of users, not only depending on gender, but also their cultural and social backgrounds age, etc. So why is this relevant for public space in London and for the public space charter? There's increasing pressure on public resources and the conflicts between competing forms of uses are intensifying. That's why it is particularly important to clarify which aspects constitute key values for whom in a given area. This is actually North Hall Fields Park, um, one of our projects and uh, 
we regularly go back and talk to people and, and see how it's being used. In Vienna, more than 60 pilot projects have been implemented, including 1,000 meters of pavement widening, 40 new pedestrian crossings, immediate green button close to primary schools, introducing ramps and lifts where there were previously just stairs, improving lighting and redesigning squares. These small improvements are about to a huge effect uh, on a day-to-day -day basis for citizens, led to larger projects, including pedestrianization of Marihilfestrasse, which is uh, the city's main shopping street. One of the principles here was also introducing street furniture, which encouraged people to come and spend time here uh, without necessarily having to shop. So these are not associated with a cafe or a restaurant. So why am I on and on about uh, Vienna? For one reason, just to tease you, uh, Vienna has been voted one of the most livable cities time and time again by Monocle magazine. Interestingly, Berlin, another city which embraced this gender mainstreaming in their urban planning policy, comes just after Vienna last year. So how can we do this? We actually don't have to start afresh. There's ample literature and guides uh, which can tell us how gender mainstreaming principles can be incorporated in all levels of city governance. So starting with Vienna again, um, their guidelines um, incorporate public space planning all the way to uh, land use and development planning. Uh, this is an example from their manual which uh, looks at housing for different life phases. Uh, Berlin, as mentioned, also has a manual and has implemented lots of projects following this policy, looking at things such as uh, competition juries and tendering process through the gender mainstreaming principles. How to Design fair sh a Fair Shared City is a series of eight short stories looking at issues um, such as why there are less girls, uh, teenage girls, in playgrounds and uh, sports pitches outdoors, and how design can actually change that. And most recently, this report came out in December 2017, ARUP has looked at um, planning for urban childhoods and quantifying the benefits of making urban spaces more child-friendly. So let the London's public space charter be specific. Let it recognize the difference amongst us users and create equal access to cities' resources for every day. Thank you.